Hi, I'm Gemma Shan, and I'm here with Elle to talk about my beauty truths. I'm a child of the 80s. Um, my mum uh, was kind of a big inspiration to me growing up, or well, she still is. She went all in on the uh, Princess Diana haircut, so she had that kind of whole sequence. And I remember kind of going into her room when I was young, and she had like the dressing table and, uh, you know, the L-net, kind of wafts of L-net in there. And I just remember at that age, beauty being something just really fun and creative. And I just remember not being that too self-conscious or, or you know, looking um, to kind of do any particular thing. It was more just kind of, you know, playing dress up and um, and having fun and trying on my mum's lipsticks. And so my mum actually used to cut my hair. And I think the, the Asian bowl cut is very much a, a rite of passage that I'm sure quite a few people will identify with. There's a haircut she gave me where I, I have an actual asymmetric sort of fringe. Yeah, I mean, I forgive her for that. Thanks, Mum. But um, <laughs> not my not my best look. I don't I don't remember feeling that embarrassed by it, which I'm really glad. Uh, I had it for quite a long time, you know, from kind of being a toddler to right up to probably about six or seven. And then I, ha I have a younger sister, and she also kind of had to go through that as well. So there are some great pictures of us both um, with the same haircut at the same time. I mean, to be honest, there there wasn't a great deal of representation of people who looked like us or our family. It was you know, very Eurocentric in terms of the media and, and magazines. Um, there wasn't a great deal in terms of the range of makeup that was available, uh, in terms of what would suit your skin tone, um, you know, whether you're talking about foundation or you know, through to kind of cheat colors and everything else. So you had to kind of just work with what was, what was available. Um, I definitely made a lot of faux pas in terms of my my beauty looks in the in the 90s you know the really dark lip liner and over plucked eyebrows my mum always said you know just don't over pluck your eyebrows but obviously I did and it took years and years and years for them to grow back um always listen to your mum but no as a teenager I, I again it was it was very much a case of you know it was the 90s it was the era of kind of you know, the supermodels and those were kind of what you aspired to. It was, it was, a, it was a kind of a, an idea of beauty that was quite, um, you know, it was one thing. It wasn't like you were seeing a great range of different skin tones or body types or hair types. So I went through a phase of just wearing this really kind of blue, actually saying that I, it's, it's kind of back in fashion, but the kind of a blue green um, eyeliner, like full blown blue eyeshadow at one point, this kind of, turquoisey blue color oh a lot of sparkle as well a lot of actual kind of glitter that kind of that kind of thing yeah you're you're making a few mistakes you don't really know what suits you yet um, I certainly didn't know what what suited my skin and, you know confidence takes time and um, yeah you're I think just trying to look a certain way that's not necessarily who you are or how you feel comfortable and I definitely there were you know years of feeling like that I remember there were a few kind of early roles as well where you know it was very much uh, kind of producers or, or, or whatever kind of wanting you to look kind of stereotypically kind of Asian or Oriental or you know more Chinese and that kind of thing so again it was just again trying people trying to put your look into a, a kind of thing that you weren't necessarily that you know that wasn't kind of all that you were that you are or that you're comfortable with but I found that there was a definite kind of shift in that um, after that, those kind of first few years, makeup and hair became very freeing actually. Yeah, I think the industry in the past has been very kind of focused on kind of youth, kind of almost like fetishizing that. I think that's been incredibly um, restricting on women and, and it can be quite kind of oppressive, that idea that you have to, you know, you're not allowed to age. You know, you're not allowed to. Yeah, as an actress, it definitely crosses your mind you're gonna be aging in, in HD, but what really encourages me now is the fact that we are seeing many, many more women who are, you know, over 40, over 50, over 60, and being celebrated for who they are and, you know, and what they look like and aging is, is natural. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I probably will massively freak out, but I, I really hope that actually that I can age with grace and a bit of self-acceptance and um, again it being more about kind of taking care of yourself rather than it being this kind of really harsh regime that is trying to kind of turn back the clock. I have so many women that I think are absolutely incredible. Celine Dion I think is an absolute legend. I mean Helen Mirren 
looks fantastic. Uh, and then Viola Davis, who's so talented and so kind of, you know, she has just such a wonderful intelligence and, um, and talent. And then she obviously looks amazing as well. Luckily we have, have you know, many great women now who are kind of doing their thing and owning who they are. And I'm really inspired by that. There's definitely been a shift in the world in that, you know, it's not about looking perfect all the time. It's not about being completely flawless. I, mean, I still get breakouts, um, you know, around the time of the month. Um, and then just kind of being quite relaxed about it, not feeling like you have to have this kind of armor on. So now like beauty for me, it's more about kind of self-care and having that time in the day with yourself and it, it makes you feel good. And you know, what I really noticed during this whole kind of lockdown period and everything else, you realize that actually you're really not doing stuff for anyone else. It's really just for you. I mean, definitely there were days that went by where I was just like, I just, what's the point in washing my hair? What's the point in, you know, moisturizing my skin or doing anything, you know, feeling like a real slob and you, you don't feel particularly good. And then actually washing your hair, conditioning it, blow drying it, maybe putting on a, a nice eyeliner or a, or, a, or a nice lipstick, a bit of color actually makes you feel so much better. And it's it's not that you're even necessarily gonna see anyone, but it's, it's, it's for you and it's your time and it's about just looking after yourself. And yeah, I found that actually really, really good in terms of kind of my mental health. That's kind of your, your beauty routine can become like your meditation really in a way. Thanks so much for listening to my beauty truths.